Good day, everybody. This is meteorologist Mark Molnar. Thank you for joining me on the start for Weather Eastern for the start of this massively frigid cold weekend. Will we see more frigid temperatures? Is this going to be a thing? Will we see this translate into big winter storms? Do we have any winter storms in the pipeline coming up? We'll explore all that, the whole winter pattern, model talk analysis, and what I think is going to happen. Also, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell button. Also, in the description down below, there are timestamps to skip ahead. If you wish, I will not be offended. In addition, down below in the timestamps, there is the link to my winter weather outlook. So if you haven't watched that, go ahead and watch that. And guess what? If you want to leave a question or comment, go right ahead. I love to read your questions or comments. Let's get right into it. All right, I'm going to start off with this snapshot of the Northeast. This was for your Saturday morning uh, between 7 and 8 a.m. This was when we had the radiational cooling, high pressure crusting overhead, clear skies, sinking air, and some of those normally colder valleys saw lows as low as minus 17 to minus 22 below. There's a negative 17 in Elmira, negative 9 at the Binghamton Airport, negative 5 at Syracuse. But these valleys, like I said, look at that, north of Albany, negative 10. Some of these valleys, as low as negative 20. We had some negative 22s as well, northwest of Wilkes-Barre Scranton here. And look at that, negative 24 up at Saranac Lake, minus 33 up near Ogdensburg, New York. This was a pretty intense cold cell that pooled across the Northeast. All the right factors came together for some historic lows. How low did you go if you were in the Northeast? Post it in the comments section down below. I'm interested to see how low you went here at Mediamark Studios. We were negative 17.3, so there you have it. All right, taking a look at snowfall across the Northeast, this takes us through Sunday, January 23rd through Wednesday morning, January 26th, and most of the snowfall will be off Lake Erie and Lake Ontario here. Uh, associated with lake-enhanced snowfall as these systems move in, and the first system Sunday, and then later Monday and to early Tuesday, and then, of course, another one early Wednesday. So we get into some snow, a general three to six inches in this darker blue outside of the uh, more enhanced lake effect band. So this piling up between Sunday and Wednesday morning. So, and then across the rest of the Northeast, not too much right in between here from Albany, Binghamton to State College, anywhere from like two to three inches, even up to Burlington, Northwest to Concord and getting into Maine here as well. So the big story is going to be right around the Great Lakes here from Sunday morning all the way through Wednesday morning. All right, let's take a look at nationally with the snowfall. We'll start off with the high resolution Euro and we see we put this into motion. There it is. It's mainly across the east, the Great Lakes, a little bit into the Pacific Northwest through the forecast period, takes us through the 1st of February. It is interesting towards the end of the forecast period, maybe a potential Appalachian storm heading into Northern Virginia and parts of the Northeast. Um, this system off the coast of Maine, this also happens towards Monday, January 31st, but most of the snowfall will be confined across the Great Lakes in the Northeast, a little bit here in the Pacific Northwest, and if we get into the GFS, let's just put this into motion quick, painting a similar story, although that's picking up on something, wow, down here in the Carolinas again, uh, for right around the 30th of January, so most of the snow continues to be back east, even though it's a positive NAO index. Quite interesting. And if we get into, say, the Canadian, showing a similar picture here back across the east, you see all this snow here across the Great Lakes piling up over time. Not any major storms, but these minor to moderate storms that continue to pile up accumulations here into the northeast. So... There you have it. Okay, now the one thing we look at in the east for potential good uh, patterns for east coast snowstorms is the NAO index. Well, look at this. This is a little strange because it's so cold back east and we've had so much snow in certain areas. And look at this. We're positive and we're supposed to go even more positive here uh, towards uh, February 1st. So this is a bit puzzling, but it is there. That signal is there. But it doesn't mean that it has to be warm with ridging across the east. That's been proven here, um, you know, back when the NAO index was negative. We were seeing, especially in December, we were seeing a lot of areas of ridginess back east. Let's explain and we'll get into the models here. All right, we're taking a look at the uh, Euro. This is the upper air level pattern. Let's take a look at what this NAO index is going to be happening here with the index here. Uh, we'll see what this has an impact on the pattern. Let's put this into motion here. Yeah. Continuing with the troughiness here, ridginess a little bit right of center of the where the NAO 
would be measured. So, And we have some ridging out in the west coast. This could be the beginning. We'll see if it is something of a pattern change. But it doesn't seem to be. In fact, that just continues to be ridging out west. And a trough continuing across the east. We do get maybe a little bit of ridging here up around eastern Canada. But for the most part, we continue that pattern of potential east coast snowstorms. This is through the end of the month in the beginning of February, and look at that. Yeah, we do get ridging here from time to time in northeastern North America, but look at this. Ridging, can, or troughiness continues across the east. Let's see if the other models here agree. We'll just get into the GFS, and look at that. We get through next week, and we do get some ridging being picked up here by the 28th, Friday the 28th of January here on the GFS. Major ridging out west, though, and as long as you have this ridging out west, you're going to get this more troughiness here across the east. And look at this. Big troughiness kicking across the southeast. There's that potential snow event across the Carolinas that the GFS was picking up on. And we'll take a look at the surface maps momentarily to take a look at that. And there is a big trough, you know, troughiness. And look at this. This is quite interesting. There it is, a big old ridge here across southern Greenland uh, into the north-central Atlantic. But then the GFS does go out farther, get some big ridging here back across the east. This is February 5th, so we'll have to keep an eye on that there. Um, so there you have it. Let's get into the surface maps. Okay, here we go. Good old surface maps. Let's put this into motion, starting off with the GFS. And there's those systems across the northeast, the Sunday system, tapping into some lake and hands here. Across the southeast conditions, really quiet as well as out west here. And look at that. Another system there, early Tuesday morning, bringing some lake-enhanced precipitation. And there's that system across the southeast. Let me back this up from mon to Monday. We might have the chance of some strong thunderstorms, mainly the GFS keeping it off the coastline. But we'll have to watch eastern Texas, southwestern Louisiana here. Might have something trying to flare up here. High pressure uh, back across the east here. West, really quiet on the GFS and look at that we put that system into motion for your Tuesday could get into some strong thunderstorms there across northern Florida and then quieting up a little bit across the northeast here high pressure really kicking in another system following a very similar path here across the southeast let's get that out of the way and high pressure really dominating out west here and then a potential for what looks like a potential severe weather outbreak again here across the northern part of Florida, southwestern Georgia. This is uh, next Saturday, the 29th. And look at this. This is the this is what the GFS was picking up on for next weekend. Potential for a snowstorm here in parts of South Carolina, North Carolina, southeastern Virginia. A lot can change between now and then, but the pattern is there according to the GFS 989 millibars. And that subtly goes off to the east, so it doesn't bring anything for the northeast, but we'll have to keep an eye on it here because these things really change. You know, the margin of error is great, but look at that. The trough continue. Ooh, look at that. That's for your Wednesday, February 2nd, keeping the potential coastals alive here. Let's get right into the high-resolution Euro. We're going to progress it here. There's that system for Sunday, bringing across the lakes. And we'll look for that southeast system. Euro is a bit more pronounced with some of these thunderstorms with that system on your Monday here. And there's that next system across the northeast. Some lake enhanced snowfall. Nothing too heavy, but you get that lake enhancement in those narrow bands. You can get four to six inches pretty easily. Now, the Euro is a little bit further south with that system on Tuesday here. You see thunderstorms, stronger thunderstorms, mainly south of Tampa, into parts of South Florida. And we put this into motion. Look at this. Euro is keeping this system much more quicker and more open wave than the GFS and kicking it out of the picture pretty quick here. And then that next system keeps it mostly off the coast, clipping eastern Maine for next weekend. So that's uh, quite a bit different in the medium term there for then the GFS there. And there's that system across the southeast heading into January 31st, Monday. So the potential for some strong thunderstorms across Florida. We're going to keep severe weather chances. And look at that. There's a system across the Carolinas and Virginia. And then eventually the northeast, if this Euro verifies, this could be a pretty big system across parts of the mid-Atlantic and the northeast. So stay tuned for that. The pattern is definitely here across the east.
All right, taking a look at Derek Rentschler from Lebanon County, Pennsylvania. Back on January 17th of 22, some good packing snow, his first snowman of 2022. So take a look at that. Amazing packing snow there. Great job there, Derek, in the Lebanon County, Pennsylvania area. Nice job. And here we go back on January 16th. Derek Rentschler from Lebanon County, Pennsylvania around 9.30 p.m., the changeover to heavy sleet had happened, but you can see by this point, he had about three inches of snow just north of the Lebanon County line and north Lebanon Township. So, there you have it. This was a quick snowfall accumulation, good packing snow, before it changed over to heavy sleet. All right, taking a look at John from Islip, New York. He was dealing with beach erosion from the last Sunday storm. He took these on January 19th of 22 here. Look at this. Lots of beach erosion to be had. I remember he did mention that he had wind gusts over 60 miles per hour that occurred across his area with this Sunday storm. You can see, look at that beautiful beach, but you can see how the sand was pushed inland and then some sand missing there. So they'll have to get out there and uh, deal with the beach erosion, but there it is. Nice captures there, John. You can see beautiful blue skies in the backgrounds with some nice cirrus clouds. Nice captures there, John. All right, for your Sunday across the Northeast, we have a cold front moving in, so we're going to see some snow showers out ahead of that, especially during the afternoon hours, anywhere from an inch or less in that late blue. However, we will see some lake-enhanced uh, snowfall, bands of lake effect snow off Lake Erie and Lake Ontario, uh, particularly around the Syracuse area, Oswego County area, as well as south of Buffalo and Erie here. Uh, where we could see anywhere from three to six inches of snow in these heavier snow bands, likely. So, And then early highs near 20 in places like Syracuse, Buffalo, and Erie. The temperatures will be tumbling throughout the day. And for your Sunday across the southeast, it's going to be getting warmer here. 52 in Atlanta, 51 in Birmingham, 53 in Charleston, 62 in Tampa, 75 is the warm spot in Miami, getting back into the 60s in Houston, and 41 back into the 40s in Norfolk. Sunny skies. And for your Monday across the northeast, we have a warm front pushing in, pushing high pressure out of the way as it retreats to the northeast. That will bring some warmer temperatures to western New York and most of Pennsylvania. But it will also bring some snow showers getting a little bit heavier and steadier throughout the day in western New York, northwestern Pennsylvania, into southern Ontario, where we could see a couple inches of additional accumulation from Sunday. So there you have it. Some more snow showers likely. So we're keeping this active brisk pattern continuing. All right, so you're for your Monday here. We're getting a little bit unsettled in eastern Texas here in parts of Louisiana. We have the chance of thunderstorms on the north side of this frontal boundary that's coming out of the eastern Gulf of Mexico, and we could see some scattered showers and thunderstorms. Some could contain damaging wind gusts here. So that's going to be the main threat. We're getting up into the 60s, places like Houston and New Orleans, as well as the rest of the Gulf Coast, 50s inland, 54 in Atlanta. But yeah, the big story here is chance of it's not going to be a widespread severe weather outbreak in that yellow zone there is a slight chance of a strong thunderstorm so be aware of that and for your tuesday across the northeast the next system pushing through cold front pushing across the part of eastern new york eastern pennsylvania and this is bringing scattered snow showers a mix of rain and snow across eastern pennsylvania maryland connecticut and parts of the boston area and plain rain along the coastline warm front is pushing all the way up into the central part and even the northern part of New England here. So it's bringing 30 degree temperature, something you haven't seen in quite some time here. So it'll feel like a little mini heat wave. Behind the front, though, we have cold air blasting across Buffalo, Erie, and Toronto. These will be your early highs as temperatures fall throughout the day and reality sets back in with another Arctic plunge. For your Tuesday across the southeast, we're continuing to stay unsettled here. We have that low coming out of the Gulf of Mexico, a little bit lesser of a front to the northwest, and this is where the problem is going to lie. It's mainly across north Florida and southern Georgia. This is where we could see some scattered strong thunderstorms throughout the day. Showers and thunderstorms will be likely across those darker green zones, but in that yellow zone, uh, especially just east of Panama City, south of Charleston, South Carolina, and in the Tampa area on northeastward, we're going to see the threat of damaging wind large hail potential here, especially just along and north of that warm front that's draped across the northeast gulf here. So coming out of the gulf, we'll see strong thunderstorms throughout the day, so be wary of that. And then to the north, we have colder air filtering in. And for your Wednesday across the northeast, wow, what a change. We're back to bitter cold. 
a morning lows and with single digits and below zero and highs only into the teens throughout much of interior upstate New York, Pennsylvania, uh, and all of New England for that matter. And only coastal areas getting into the 20 degree range, some 30s down there by Atlantic City and Washington, D.C. But wind chills will be in full swing. We could have some lake effect streamers here. Uh, southeast of Lake Erie and Lake Ontario as well. Only looking at a couple inches here at this point, but at this point the big story will be the cold and the wind chills. And for your Wednesday across the southeast, not much to talk about here. The front kicks to the south pretty fast here, even clearing South Florida. Only a 20% chance of a shower or thunder shower. but for the most part, Miami remains the warm spot at 78. The rest of the southeast cooling down into the 50s along the Gulf Coast and 40s in interior Georgia, 43 in Atlanta and Alabama, Birmingham, 42, 37 up by Norfolk, but Nashville is the cold spot at 33. Extended forecast for my upper Susquehanna River viewers from Binghamton to Scranton. Take a look Sunday through Thursday here. We're looking uh, scattered snow showers throughout the day, especially between 1 and 6 p.m. on Sunday. Less than an inch possible. It will be a little bit warmer of a start, 12, with 25 as your high. Zero starting to the work week. Not a good start there. Really cold. Up north, 25. Maybe some scattered lake effects. Snow showers into Tuesday as well. We'll see a little bit warmer air on the front side of the next system. But look at that. Behind that next system, Wednesday, Thursday, bitter cold temperatures. And look at that. A low of minus 10 on Thursday. So that wintry pattern continues. And as always, I want to thank you for joining me for this edition of Weather Eastern. It's a very bitter, cold, wintry edition I just went over with you. But don't forget, on Facebook, it's Media Mark, also Weather Northeastern. Also, if you want to like my hurricane page for tropical season, it's Hurricane Northeastern. And don't forget to like me. Follow me on Twitter at Weather Eastern. That's at Weather Eastern, MediaMark.com, WeatherNortheastern.com. Thank you for joining me.